Hello and welcome back for another episode of the Bible in one year with the preacher's husband. As we pick up right where we left off yesterday, we're going to continue on through Isaiah and do chapters 37 through 39. And also, I hope that you will take a look at Psalm 76 tonight. And um, be sure you read through that. It was an interesting read. Tomorrow we're going to go through Isaiah 40 through 43. So today we start out with Hezekiah. It's been a long day. Right where we left off. So here King, this is Hezekiah seeking Isaiah's counsel for what has just happened with um, the king of Assyria. So when King Hezekiah heard the report that his guys had returned to him, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, sackcloth, and he went to the Lord's temple. Now he sent Eliakim to the prophet Isaiah and basically told him everything that happened. And Isaiah basically says, um, here is what you need to tell your master. The Lord says this, don't be afraid. I'm about to put a spirit in him and he will hear a rumor and return to his own land where I will cause him to fall by the sword. And it happens. And then, of course, there's this letter that's written and he, um, the king of Assyria writes a letter to King Hezekiah. Don't let your God, your God on whom you rely deceive you by promising that Jerusalem won't be handed over to the king of Assyria. So basically saying your God is not going to do this for you. Don't be, don't be fooled by your God. So Hezekiah goes and he prays. And here we are. As Hezekiah prays, he spreads this letter out. He took the letter from the messenger's hands. He read it and he went to the Lord's temple, spread it out on the floor before the Lord, and he prayed. And there's this big, long prayer that he prayed. And then God answers his prayer. God answers his prayer um, through Isaiah, because here we are in the book of Isaiah, right? So Isaiah sent a message to Hezekiah. He said, the Lord God of Israel says, because you prayed to me about King um, Sennacherib of Assyria, this is the word that has been spoken against him. And then there's verse after verse after verse of the things that God said are going to happen to the king of Assyria. And it happened. Indeed it did. He was defeated and he died. Now in chapter 38, we're faced with Hezekiah having an illness, right? So Hezekiah, he essentially became terminally ill. And he says, um, the prophet came and said to him, this is what the Lord says, set your house in order for you are about to die. You will not recover. Whoa, what a shocker. I tell you what, that's got to be some of the most horrible news you can hear. And people hear it every day when doctors tell you that you're going to die. You've got a terminal illness. But Isaiah tells him this, and he's just heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken about this. But then the word came to, to Isaiah. So he prays again. He prays to God again. And he goes through this long spill and this prayer to God. And then Isaiah says, here's what the Lord said. He's heard your prayer and he's seen your tears. Look, he's going to have 15 years to your life. And then he's ecstatic. He's happy about this. Like, oh my goodness, I'm going to recover. This is going to be great. Got 15 more years. Good stuff's going to happen. This is going to be great. And he writes a poem. He said, you know what? Um, I'm going to write this. He writes this poem. After he had been sick and recovered from his illness, he wrote this poem. And it goes on and on and on. It's a pretty good, good poem. But there was one folly about Hezekiah. In chapter 39, um... Isaiah goes to Hezekiah and says, look, here's what's, what's the deal here. Um, these guys from Babylon we're, we're, have come to, basically what has happened here is he, Hezekiah had these visitors from Babylon and they came and Hezekiah just showed them everything around their palace, everything that he had, the, um, the silver, gold, spices, his oils, his armor, he showed them the whole place. And then they leave and Isaiah comes to him and is like, 
who are these people? Where they come from? And Hezekiah's like, well, they're from Babylon. They're just showing them stuff around. He goes, what did you show them? He's like, well, I showed them everything in the entire palace. So Isaiah's like, oh, my goodness. Here you go again. Here's what God is saying about this. Look. Um, everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until today will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your descendants who can't come from you, whom you father, will be taken away and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. And then Hezekiah says to Isaiah, get this, here's what he says. He says, well, the word of the Lord that you have just spoken is pretty good. Look good to me. He said, that, that means there's going to be peace and security during my lifetime. I'm good. How selfish can you be? And when I read that, I got to thinking, you know what? He's done all this praying and he's done all this stuff. And it, I'm reminded of, of a prayer that was written by Conrad Hilton. Now, Conrad Hilton, if you don't know, he was born in 1887 and he died in 1979. He was the founder of the Hilton Hotel chain. Now, I'm sure if you know the Hiltons today, you're thinking, man, these are not good people, right? These people are heathens, and they're, they're pretty rowdy folks. But this guy was actually a man of conviction, and he was um, very adamant in the fight against communism, and the cold during the cold war era and he published a prayer on full page ads in major magazines on july the 4th in 1952 he he wrote this prayer he had it published in all tons and tons of magazines all over the place in the united states and this is what he said this is conrad hilton the founder of hilton hotels he said our father in heaven we pray that you save us from ourselves how appropriate the world that you have made for us to live in peace we have made into an armed camp we live in fear of war to come we are afraid of the terror that flies by night and the arrow arrow that flies by day the pestilence that walks in darkness and the destruction that wastes at noonday we have turned from you to go our selfish way we have broken your commandments and denied your truth. We have left your altars to serve the false gods of money and pleasure and power. Forgive us and help us. Now, darkness gathers around us and we are confused in all our counsel. Losing faith in you, we lose faith in ourselves. Now, inspire us with wisdom all of us of every color, race, and creed to use our wealth, our strength to help our brother instead of destroying him. Help us to do your will as it is done in heaven and to be worthy of your promise of peace on earth. Fill us with new faith, new strength, and new courage that we may win the battle for peace. Be swift to save us, dear God, before the darkness falls. Wow, that could have been written today. It could have been written today. It is that profound and that, that appropriate for what's going on right here in our country today. Don't forget to read Psalm 76. I'm going to leave you with this. And I hope this has touched you. If it has, click the like button, the subscribe button. Give me a rumble if we're, you're watching me on Rumble. And um, follow me there on Rumble. And I hope you click the little notification button so you get notified the next time I upload a video, which will be tomorrow for another episode of the Bible in one year with the preacher's husband. We'll see you then.